The Danger Academy by Tom Palmer. Chapter 4, the one where Danny sees a ghost. Danny has been investigating a strange football academy. Under false pretenses he went to the academy where he was chased while he was investigating somewhere he shouldn't have been. Now he is back for a second day, taking a risk that nobody saw who it was who was snooping. Danny sat in the woods for a second morning. Today there was no man entering the hangar and no lights going on in upstairs rooms, no plane arriving on the runway. Danny saw nothing in the two hours he was sat there. As a result, his mind had started to wander. To the cases he and Charlotte had taken on in the past, the danger they had been in. When had he been most scared? Although he'd faced dangerous football agents from Ghana, Russian billionaires with private armies and been shot at while swimming away in an Italian lake, the worst thing he'd ever come up against had been a 17-year-old boy from his hometown, Ian Mills. And it had been the most frightening because Mills had not put Danny in danger, but had put Charlotte in danger, making Danny feel worse than ever. Danny shuddered at the memory. The sun was coming up. It was morning, but somehow he felt colder than ever. Danny was nervous entering the academy for a second day, even though he knew Charlotte was watching from a cafe over the road, her telephone switched on. There was nothing about going into a building that you might not be able to get out of that played on his nerves more. Like a lab rat going into a cage that might never come out alive. But today, there was nothing to suggest that Danny was in danger. There were two security guards in the reception area. That was new. But there was no reason to, to, for him to think that they were a danger to him, seeing as they didn't react at all as he approached. Why were they there then? Because, he'd had, because they'd had an unknown intruder the day before. Clearly, they didn't recognise him. Danny walked on boldly. He signed in at the reception desk, not even looking at the security guards. It would only draw attention to him if he did. Then, past the images of Vinnie Adams, past the signed shirts and photos, displayed like relics in a church, past everything and into the dressing rooms. Day two of the football trial was exactly the same as day one. Running, ball work, that sort of thing. The only difference on the schedule was towards the end of the day, an interview. Danny frowned when he saw that. Interview? Why did they need to interview the boys? Surely they'd just had to see how good they were at football. Another question, but still no answers, and time running out. At the dinner break, Danny chose not to sit with the other trialists. He wanted to find Connor and Ronan, Jake's friends. Jake had given him some photographs of the players. Danny walked around with his food tray for a couple of minutes, trying to find the boys they depicted. He was aware that one of the security guards, who had been in reception first thing, was now in the dining hall. He was also aware that the guard was watching him. But Danny continued to look for the two players. That was the best thing to do. He'd read it in a detective novel. If something was different, carry on as normal. If you start to behave differently yourself, then you'll be spotted by your enemies. Mercifully, Danny saw Connor and Ronan at the next table. They were sitting alone, in silence. Mind if I sit here? Danny asked. No, the darker boy said, Connor. Danny had decided to be direct with them, say he recognised them, he needed answers and he was going to have to start pushing a bit harder. You two used to play at United FC, didn't you? The boys looked at each other, then at Danny. He could see how they didn't know how to react. They remained silent. I'm a friend of Jake, Danny went on, and Tomash. Oh yeah, Ronan replied cautiously. We remember them. Danny glanced up. Was the guard still watching him? Yes, and now he was coming over. Danny knew he had seconds to get some answers. Why did you leave United? He asked, knowing that they had no duty to tell him anything. We were at the International, we're at the International Academy now, Connor said. It's our family, Ronan added, like a robot. We don't need United. The guard was half way across the hall now. Family, Danny thought. That was the word they were using when they were brainwashing Connor last night. What about your family in Ireland, Danny pushed. The Academy is our family now, Connor parroted. Come on, lads, you're meant to be training now, the guard said, suddenly behind them, his hand on Danny's chair. What was going on, Danny asked himself. Why were they behaving like this? Why was the guard letting them get away from him? He had half a day left and only more and more questions, no answers. Holt had paid him to come here and he was going to leave with nothing. Danny Hart, interview. There were only two trialists left. Everyone else seemed to have gone home. All the boys, the coaches, the other staff, leaving the two security guards standing by the exit chatting. Danny had been sat around looking around, wondering if there was 
anywhere he could go to find out more, maybe a computer terminal, something like that. But now he had been called for his interview, he had to go. He walked across the room. This was his interview, to find out if he had gained a place at the academy. He knew, of course, that he hadn't. He wasn't good enough, but the interview might be interesting. What they might tell him could help him piece together the jigsaw in his mind about what this place was all about. He approached the door. No voices on the other side. Why was that? And the weight of the questions he'd been asking himself all day began to trouble Danny, as did the eyes of the security guards following him from the seats to the door. This wasn't right. He had a gut feeling, just like Alex Ryder had gut feelings in the Anthony Horowitz books that he loved. So what should he do? Head for the exit? See the security guards let him by? Why wouldn't they? Or should, they go to the, should he go to the interview, see what he could find out? Go in, that was the answer. Anton had spent £5,000 putting him here and he'd found nothing. He had to go in. Inside, there were two men. The older man was one of the coaches from the trail, still wearing his tracksuit. The younger was someone Danny had met before and had hoped never to meet again, Ian Mills. The man who had kidnapped and threatened Charlotte, Danny's worst nightmare. The shock took the breath out of his lungs. He stepped back, ready to turn and run, knocking into the two security guards who had come up quietly behind him. They held him. Don't imagine you're going anywhere, Mills laughed. We've got unfinished business. Then Mills turned to the man beside him. Get the van and bring it round the side. We'll take him to that disused quarry. We'll do it there. What if people come looking for him? The other man said. We'll be out of here tonight, Mills said, grinning. The boss has said it's time to go to our new academy base anyway, abroad. And Danny wondered if he was about to be taken to his death just at the point that he had uncovered something terrible.